It's time to reflect on what makes a man. The classification to which I find myself prescribed. When I came to be, a tradition of man, that is, the adult male, was already well underway. At first I was made aware of structural attributes, my physical self governed by proprietary chromosomes, resulting in, among other things, excess testosterone regulating a cock and testicles. The hormonal makeup unique to my sex may exhibit as all manner of secondary traits. Hairy, physically large, strong, aggressive, but not always. What differentiates these specimens of organic matter gestated across the spectrum? That muddled pairing of gender and sexuality? Are there fundamentally male characteristics that permeate the metaphysical? Instincts that manifest as physical and emotional behaviors? What is my truth? Fit to be only me A man, a rock, a peach Blessed in fact, messed in fiction Here, me, raw What should I dream if I could? Told to be the best so far, no good. Physical attributes aside, I search for behavioral similarities among the men. Assuming, dominant, protective, decisive. In other words, aggression, possession. A recklessness born of selfish hunger. It is the woman, the child bearer, who brings new life forth into this world. And while man plays a secondary yet vital role, he will never share his physical being with another. Not in that way. Man is relegated to the role of servant, an inherent outsider among a communal species. To man is to defend, as a worker operates, our sole gendered verb. The inseminator thus becomes the flag bearer as means of territorial intimidation. In this discrepancy, he is afforded the luxury of command. He is charged with both the protection of his kin, but also the key to his own lineage. And the woman holds the lock. The perceived struggle is an ancient one. Woman the gatekeeper, man the aggressor. Biologically, physical dominance is a crude method to improve the male's odds of reproduction. And so emerges an exclusivity over violence, and women are chastised for exhibiting the temper legitimized as the realm of the male. Culturally speaking, to be a man is to have learned to be a bully. The question then, what unmakes a man, and in doing so, makes a man? Since I woke, I have sensed that my instincts are inherited from an age-old desire for power, to define that which is dominant in order to control. My manhood is shrouded in complex tales, marred by the cultural, a reinforcement of assumptions, strategic, and unregulated manipulation. The felt and the taught are so closely intertwined that many do not think to separate the two, and perhaps certain gendered traits did evolve from necessity, but are increasingly worthy of re-examination. I feel, I act, I think, I react. When I am challenged, I attack, having learned that aggression is expected of man and can be dismissed as such. But in these outbursts, I find myself prostrate, uneasy at the ease in which I can lash out, and concerned to discern my true feelings. To dominate is to denigrate, a sad king, ruler of an enslaved nation. I seek my true male self in the unlikely act of vulnerability. I feel no desire to reject my male identity. It would be false to do so. But the instincts I am drawn to, which I am told are correctly assigned and expected, those of dominance and aggression, feel wrong. Surely the role of man, the servant of life, is to be nurturing, to protect and comfort those who may be vulnerable, to hold together a communal family in time of need. The legacy of a man is measured in the strength of his community, not merely his individual triumphs, for he is not apart from anything. Rather, he is born of that which he is entrusted to secure. I seek to unlearn the classification of man, to sublimate my urges and forge a masculinity of my own that I have struggled towards and earned. I am to make a man out of me, complex as my predecessors, with an open heart, fierce with love.